Hey everybody, hey, it's Dr. Julie Steinauer. I wanted to talk to you about a topic of amblyopia today. So for those of you who don't know what amblyopia is, it's a big word, but basically it just means that um, eyesight does not develop properly and the same in one eye compared to the next. Now this can happen for a lot of reasons, but one of the reasons this could happen is maybe a high level of prescription in one eye or maybe an eye that actually turns. I would say that approximately 30 to 40 percent of my clinic now is dealing with amblyopia on a regular basis. And so we see this as a condition that is definitely on the rise. So to be aware of it, it's a really tricky condition. And if you have not had your children's eyes tested for you know, what's going on with their vision, then definitely have this done. Um, very tricky. They can fool lots of people. They can fool screenings. They can fool people pediatricians, they can fool lots of folks in the process. And oftentimes you never know that one eye is not seeing well. Um, they may even perform generally well overall in playing sports and not look like they're klutzy or clumsy, which we would tend to think would be something you definitely see with someone who's amblyopic. Not always the case though. So I want to spotlight a patient of mine whom I've seen in the clinic and recently graduated from my program. This little guy was a ball of energy. Every time he came into our clinic, we were super excited to see him. Um, he always had a fantastic attitude and he was five, five years old. Okay, so when I first saw him in October of last year, he came to us because he was having some struggles and uh, a doctor had referred him to our clinic for this amblyopia condition. Uh, he wasn't seeing well in one eye. In fact, his eyesight for his right eye was 2050. His eyesight for his left eye or better seen eye was 2030. And uh, we set to work right away working on what do we need to do to solve the problem for this little guy. And he actually had an eye turn and alternating eye turn out. Um, I say alternating, but it really was more of a, this eye turned probably about 70 to 80% of the time and the left eye only turned maybe 30 to 20% of the time. So really it was almost like more of a, an eye turn here and that's why the eyesight problem was developing or it was there and existed in that right eye. So in October of last year, he joined us in a therapy program. We just jumped right in and you know, jumped into having him come into the clinic. Um, in December of 2016, he was still 2050 and 2030. And then something magical and awesome happened come February of this year in 2017. And that is that he was equal in both eyes. He was seeing 2030 and 2030 the same for both eyes, no longer considered to be amblyopic. And when he graduated the program just last month, actually he was able to see smaller and more fine details with each of the eyes. Um, so he was seeing 2020 with each of his eyes on graduation. Now that's pretty awesome and I'm super excited about it. It doesn't always mean that we're going to see amblyopic children go from eyesight levels of whatever they are at to completely normalized and non-amblyopic situations in the span of four months. Four months is kind of a big deal. It's actually pretty fast, although sometimes I see it happen more fast than that. And then there's other times when it's actually a slow dragging process, okay? Sometimes it takes a while to train the brain to do what it needs to do. But I do want to mention some of the various procedures and things that we utilize in our clinic in order to help our patients to be able to battle through and get through their amblyopia to be considered non-amblyopic. Um, so here's what we use. We use photosyntonics or light therapy. We use something called TBI lights that flash and cause the brain to turn on information. Um, the photosyntonics also send super strong signals um, via light signals and it sends this information to the brain almost kind of saying like you can't really ignore this eye anymore. And so these were all of the things that I utilized with my little five-year-old that we just talked about. 
um, other things um, what's called a wane after image and this was a little farther down the line but we used a wane after image to be able to help him to see some details also in MIT um, we did tons and tons of small detailed work at distance and near and um, what I have tended to find out is that a lot of times some of the activities that we work on as eye doctors and developmental optometrists and vision therapists tend to actually be geared more towards small detailed work that's up close and that's definitely something that's needed and we'll see their eyesight change there but then they still can't do anything at distance they're really struggling there so we have to do distance and near so don't leave those two components out um, we do lots of patching obviously and sometimes even utilize what we would call contact lens patching or contact lens occlusion therapy where one eye the better seen eye is given a contact lens to blur out the eyesight almost forcing that other eye to become a good eye, a better eye, a better seen eye. Okay, sometimes I hate to use the terminology like good and bad eye. We don't want to say it that way, but we want that eye that's not functioning at its best to become much better. Um, another thing is, is, and this is super important. Hi Mia, nice to see you on here. Another thing that's super important is also to be able to make sure that we have the correct prescription. If you have a prescription in which one eye is super, super thick with its lens power, and the other one's not, it's not thick at all. That's a mismatch the brain will probably never ever match and put together. And it's a big pet peeve of mine. I don't want people to be in mismatch contact lens or glasses prescriptions. And so one of my goals is no matter what you come in with, my goal is to try and get things to be more equivalent between the two eyes or as equivalent as I can possibly get it um, so that we're better set up for the brain to recognize the same kind of image in each eye, um, whether glasses are on or off. So that's some of the ways that we handle amblyopia in our clinic. And remember that, again, if you've heard of this terminology and it sounds like it's a scary thing, it's absolutely something that you want to get treated and corrected as soon as possible, whether it's in yourself or your child, but there's no age that's like too old or too young to work with. I work with infants all the way up to the elderly patient population. And so there's no age range, there, no age range. There's also no age at which we just say like, you know what, too old, sorry, can't do anything for that. That's another big thing of mine. I don't like to hear that you're too old or you're too young, okay? No age range that this is not possible. We can always work on it no matter what the age is. There's always something to do. So if you know someone who's amblyopic, my call to action here is to say, tag them in this video. They need to see this information. I'll keep putting out more things. I'll keep saying more you know, information and talking about this in different ways that make it make sense to individuals. Um, for more information, you go to our webpage. You can go to visionforlifeworks.com. Obviously, check us out here and keep tabs on us here on Facebook. Um, you can also go to Twitter. And you know, if you're interested and you'd like to become part of our regular mailing and find out more tips and awesome things about vision, then put a comment down here below and we'll get you on our mailing list. Um, it's an email blast that goes out, it's like a blog. And and so um, always good stuff and you're never taken advantage of. And with that, I'm going to say thank you so much for tuning in today. Even if you tune on the replay, let me know that you tune in on the replay. And don't forget, tag people. They need to see this. All right, be awesome. See ya.